Good morning, SNFL Gospel. We are glad that you could be with us today. We want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers who are joining us today. Braden, it's your wife's first time being a mother. It's true. It's really exciting. Yeah, so did you buy her something nice? Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming. Great. Well, we'll deal with that later. Happy Mother's Day to all of those moms, grandmas, aunts, even surrogate mothers, mothers that uh, have a special place in our lives. We want you to have a special blessing today. As we open our service this morning, let's open with a word of prayer. Jesus, we thank you today that we can gather in this way, that God, that you are here with us, whether we're here gathered physically or gathered digitally, God. I pray that uh, we would just sense your Holy Spirit with us today. God, we pray for all the moms today and all those special women in our lives. God, we pray that you would bless them today, that they, are, that they would know that they are loved and appreciated. God, we pray today that you would meet with us here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I would welcome you to join with us as we sing. i 
and proclaim our love for you. There's a power that's made perfect in my weakness. Fills me up with the strength that is fearless. I find hope within your everlasting it fans my faith into flame Cause I'm living with the fire Burning inside of me I'm living for the Savior Jesus eternally With all that I am, Lord I give you my heart To let the flames shine brighter Let your praise sing Turn morning into dancing. When I praise, I can hear the darkness trembling. All my fears are swept away by perfect love. You fan my faith into flame. I'm living with the fire burning inside of me. Savior, Jesus, eternally, with all that I am, Lord, I give you my heart, to so let the flame shine brighter, let your face sing louder. Jesus, the name above every 
because only you are worthy. God, today as we come before you, we lay our lives down to you. We lay our, the things that consume our minds down at your feet. We say, take it, you can have it all. Only you are worthy of my life. God, I pray that today as we hear from your word and what you would like to say to us today, be exalted and lifted up and glorified. God, that we would hear from your heart today as Laura speaks. That we would hear what you want us to say and that we would be open and receptive to your word to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Um, my name is Laura Chalmers um, and I am excited to be here sharing with you what God's been placing on my heart um, recently. And I want to say a big happy Mother's Day um, to all you of you moms out there and to all of those, all those of you who participate in the role of mothering. Um, we love you and we are so thankful for you. Um, it's been a strange season. Um, it's very um, difficult. Um, to to be in this big <laughs> room um, by myself, speaking to a camera. Um, I'm just so reminded of how desperately I want to shake 47 of your hands <laughs> this morning and how, um, yeah, how much I miss our gathering and how much I miss um, the interactions that we have with one another, the moments of encouragement and the moments of um, just cheering one another on and um, blessing one another just through just those everyday interactions. Um, we really miss it. Um, 
And we're almost two months in. Um, it's unbelievable how much time has passed since we have been able to see one another's faces and to just worship together um, in one room. And I'm thankful that we have the opportunity to gather um, in our living rooms and, and, and through social media to be able to um, just worship together. And it's not the same, but um, yeah, I just rejoice at the thought of, of us singing <laughs> together, even though we're apart. Um, before all of this began, um, before we had to start practicing or, or distancing, um, I was feeling like I had reached a completely new stage of motherhood. Um, three of my kiddos were in school, and my teeny tiny social butterfly, my youngest, was begging every day to go to Marla's house, which is where she would go on the days that I was working. Um, and she... Yeah, every day that I was home with her, she would flop on the ground and cry and demand that I take her to Marla's. And so I was feeling this newfound freedom um, to s just step into work a little bit more and to, to take on some new roles, um, and some ro a, a new role that, that was a much steeper learning curve than what I would have been willing to commit to um, previously. And so I took on a new role at the Bible College. And right before officially stepping into that role, um, my kids' school completely shut down. <laughs> and those support systems that I was counting on, the people that I was depending on being able to lean on um, to support me and to support my family and to, to care for my children so that, that I could do this new role with excellence, um, we're no longer there. And I found that, that my husband Josh and I were having to, um, to work through how we were gonna manage our roles as parents and as employees and as, um, for the first time ever, kindergarten and grade one and grade three substitute teachers trying to, to take um, materials that are be being given to us and, and translate them and teach them to our kids. Um, and it's been quite overwhelming. Um, there's been lots of moments where I've just felt like um, there's things that I want to contribute to and things that I want to give my time to that I haven't been able to because I've had to prioritize and I've had to choose things that will be, um, yeah, that I will that I'll commit to over other things. Um, but recently, I came home from work and I was on a lunch break and I have been working at the office. I, I'm using computer programs that I, so I go over to the college and I, and I do my work there. Well, Josh has been working from home and he <laughs> has been, yeah, working from home and parenting our children and trying to make sure everyone's fed, which happens a lot more times in the day than one would think. It's been quite a shock to him, um, but I found him in the kitchen and he was preparing lunch. And while he was preparing lunch, he was listening to a podcast po called Hope for exhausted mothers. And when I asked him if he had found the hope that he was looking for, um, he said that, al that although it was very interesting, um, that particular episode was about breastfeeding, so it didn't quite hit the mark. Um, they don't really make podcasts for men who are working from home and parenting their children all at the same time for the first time ever. There's not, there's not a lot out there to offer encouragement to Josh's new life situation. And so he was branching out, um, but it didn't, it didn't fill the need. It didn't meet what he was looking for. Um, I recently heard somebody say that although we are facing the same storm, we are not in the same boat. And while I am overwhelmed, Others are bored or lonely. Some are celebrating, others are grieving. But no matter what reality we are each facing, I think that we can all say that we have lost some measure of our support systems. We have lost the support of people um, who are there for us, um, to equip us and to help us fulfill the ro our roles with excellence. And we've also lost the ability to freely support others in the ways that we want to. Um, often it's those interactions that give us a sense of meaning and a sense of purpose for our lives. And I want to speak to you today from the book of Mark. Um, I've been reflecting lately on what it would be like to be 
the mother of Jesus, to be Mary. Um, the more I reflect on it, the more I think that it would be just the most dreadful experience, um, that it would be something that, um, that was hard and, and not as fulfilling as I think I would have believed when I was younger. Um, I think of the story of when Mary lost Jesus, when he went missing. And it took days before they even noticed he was missing because they were traveling with such a large group of people. And so they assumed that he was with some of the others that they were traveling with. And, um, and, and so, of course, Mary was worried. She was frantic. She was desperately trying to find Jesus. And, and when she found him, she was like, how could you do this to us? Um, and his response to her is one of confusion. He says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? As if to say, mom, do you remember who I am? And I imagine Mary feeling flabbergasted. I imagine her thinking, there is no podcast for this. There is no podcast called Hope for Worried Mothers who are trying to raise the Son of God. I imagine her gathering with her friends and seeking support and none of them understanding her situation. And I imagine her expectation of what her role would be um, being so different than what, what it, it actually was um, and what, what she had hoped for not necessarily being what would come into fulfillment. Um, and I want to speak to you today from the book of Mark. Um, in chapter 3. And here we see a small glimpse of the interaction between Jesus and his mother. Um, so it's, it's about 20 years later after Mary lost Jesus. Um, and, and he is grown. He has his own disciples and is traveling around and he is teaching and healing people. And there's a crowd of people that are just following him everywhere he goes. And then also there's this group of scribes who are constantly offended by him. They're bad-mouthing him, and they're, they're calling him crazy and possessed. And Jesus comes into his hometown, and he's gathered. There's a crowd around him. Let's read in Mark chapter 3, um, verses 20 and 21. And it says, And the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people was, were saying he has gone out of his mind. And I'm, I'm not sure who his family were in this context. I don't know who it was exactly who, who came to restrain him. Um, I don't know whether they were assuming the worst or whether they were um, just trying to get him out of there. Um, but... If I was Jesus' mother, and I hear reports that my baby is not eating, and reports that he's gone crazy, or that he's possessed, I'm going to pop a lasagna in the oven, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to find him, and I'm going to bring him home, and I'm going to feed him the lasagna, and then when it's time for him to leave, I'm going to send him off with all the leftovers, because that's what moms do. But let's jump down to verse 31 and 35. 31 to 35, sorry. Um, then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. If I'm Jesus' mother now, I am going to grab him by the ear, drag him home, and force feed him my lasagna. And then I may or may not send him home with leftovers. Um, <laughs> but that's probably one of the many reasons why I was not chosen to be the mother of Jesus. Um, 
we don't know how Mary responded. It doesn't say here whether, whether she felt hurt or whether she felt embarrassed or angry. We don't know even what her purpose was in coming to Jesus. We don't know if it was a direct result. We don't have enough context um, to know that whether she was coming as a direct result of the reports that were being spread about him. And I think my initial instinctual reaction to this is one um, of surprise. <laughs> um, it seems like rejection. It seems like Jesus is rejecting. It seems like he's turning his back on his mom. Like he's turning his back on his family, on the people that raised him and have been there for him. He's turning his back on the people that just want to care for him. Um, but, and it doesn't seem to line up with what, with what we see even in Jesus' own example um, throughout the Gospels and even, um, even in his call for others to honor their parents. Um, it doesn't seem to line up. So I want to be careful not to read this as a rejection but rather as a calling and a reminder similar to, to when he was a boy and says, didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? I want to read it as a reminder that, that there's something better. That even though that even though Jesus values his family and the roles that they played in one another's lives, even though he valued the familial connections, all of those things are wonderful, but it's just a reflection of something greater, something deeper, something exponentially more authentic. He is inviting her as he invites the crowd and as he invites each and every one of us to surrender our lives to the will of God and to step into a spiritual family that was meant to be primary in our lives, not secondary. On Mother's Day, we can often allow physical, the physical role of motherhood to be the primary focus of our celebration. And I hope that if you are able to phone and thank your mother and to, to express gratitude and to express care and love for the woman who poured into your life and who, who raised you, I hope that you will take that opportunity today. But I think as a church, we need to hold in high regard the role of spiritual mother and to celebrate the women who have blessed us with their mothering, regardless of the titles that they bear. But still, the roles, our roles in one another's lives, are not the core of what we are called to. They are reflections of the real thing. And right now, it's like all those mirrors, all those, re reflect, all those things that reflect the goodness and the, and the authenticity of, of being a part of the family of God, all of that is just, it's like all those mirrors are fogged up. And the reflections that we're used to looking to for help and for direction and for hope have become blurred. And it can leave us feeling abandoned. But God, our primary source of hope, the core of our identity, and the purpose for our lives has not abandoned us. He has been there in your loneliness. He has been there in your fear and your worry and your stress. He has been there in your grief, and he has been there in your celebration. He has been there, and he continues to be there through all of it. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that we can't all physically be there with you in whatever it is that you're going through. But I want to remind you today that we are just reflections of the real thing. He is the real thing. He is what you need. His hope. His love. So if you're exhausted, by all means, call up Josh Chalmers and ask for a podcast recommendation. But put your hope in God. 
Don't let your role as mother or friend or sibling or neighbor or the roles that you allow others to play in your life, don't let those roles be your source of hope. But let the hope that you have in him be the source for the light that you reflect into the lives of others. My prayer for all of us in this season where where we've had to just rethink and reshape what our lives look like and how we're going to function and how we're going to do things and um, and how we can show care for one another. My hope is that that we would come to a place where we can just center our hearts on Jesus and that we would be reminded of of his presence in our lives, that we would meet him in our living rooms and in our kitchens and our dining tables, um, wherever it is that that you are gathered today or, or, or wherever it is that you are just sitting today. Um, my prayer for you is that you would experience the presence of God, that you would experience that um, that truth of his hope and his love in your life. Um, and, that, and that out of that would be um, would become an, a new way of, of how we can think about others, how we can show love to others, how we can care for others. And, and to all the mamas out there, um, the physical and the spiritual moms, uh, thank you for the role of mothering that you have played. Thank you for the blessing that you have been. Thank you for your obedience to live out the will of God and to reflect his hope through your own losses and your disappointments and sacrifices. Um, I wish that I could um, just hand out a carnation to every single one of you. Um, But know today that you're valued and you're loved and you're appreciated. Um, You're appreciated for, um, for the ways that you've prayed and for the ways that you have poured into even I just want to say, even just for personally, for my life, I look. I have a cookbook at home that is just filled up with recipes that have been given to me um, from the people in this church and, and other women in my life, um, and it just is a it's just a marker and a sign for how um, how many people have have stood with me in moments that have been difficult and have celebrated with me and have poured into the lives of my children um, and have just been a blessing to us. And it's just a reminder that um, that we have. Yeah, that I personally have just been poured into, and I'm so grateful, so grateful for all of you. Um, And so let me pray a blessing over you today. God, I thank you for your presence in our lives. God, I thank you that that in you we find um, an, an authentic sense of family and an authentic sense of of relationship and hope, um, Lord, and so often we we become dependent on the the roles that we play in one another's lives and the roles that others play in our own lives, Lord, and we um, we look to those and 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 when when those are removed from our lives, Lord, we can feel a sense of abandonment. And so, Lord, for those who are feeling abandoned today, Lord, those who are feeling far from hopeful today, Lord, I pray that you would meet them. God, that you would meet them right where they are. God, that you'd minister to their hearts. And God, I pray that you would just speak encouragement and hope into our hearts, Lord, in a way that that allows us to, to just see you in a new way and to see our roles um, in a new light, Lord, so that um, that what has become the false things in our lives that we have placed in a primary role, Lord, that, that it would fall into the right position and the right place, Lord, and that, that we there would just be an authenticity that comes through our interactions with one another and our care for one another. Um, Lord, give us new ways to just show your love and your heart for others. And Lord, I pray um, for all the moms. Lord, the spiritual moms and the physical ones. 
God, those who have sacrificed and those who have um, just taken time to speak into to the lives of others, Lord, and to pour into the lives of others. Lord, I pray that they would be blessed today. God, I pray that they would know their worth and their value, um, Lord, and, and for those who's, whose lives ha um, haven't looked the way that they, that they once expected, God, I pray that they would just find um, a new hope in, in you and a new hope in the love that you have for them. And so, Lord, I pray that, yeah, that you would just extend your grace and your mercy and your love um, into all of our homes and into all of our living rooms. That we would rejoice in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me on your screen. Um, I, yeah, hope to see you all again very soon. I um, hope that this room will be filled again uh, and that there would be a great rejoicing. Um, we miss you and we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for sharing your heart with us today, Laura. It was great to have you share. It's good to see somebody different uh, than just Kim and I always uh, preaching. Also, Brayden, it was awesome to have you helping me lead worship today. There's lots of different things going on in the life of our church. Even though we're not physically gathering, we still have Word of the Week. This week, Roger McLean shared, and it was just fantastic. Um, and we also have our coffee, virtual coffee dates on Tuesdays. Men, we had a great one last week. Willard Mitchell joined us, and that was fantastic. Uh, at 1030 Tuesday mornings, and then women with Kim, you're at 1.30 Tuesday afternoons, and that's just fantastic as well. Youth, you have a Zoom Bible study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., and don't forget about Together Wednesdays, that we run a Facebook Live at 1.15 on Wednesday afternoons, and that's just for anybody to hop on. It's just short, usually it's about 15 minutes long, and we would love to interact with you that way. So we also have Kids Church that happens right before church on Sunday mornings at 10.15. That's both on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you're able to join us, that would be fantastic. And then church again. If you would like to continue giving to the church, there is three ways that you can do that. You can mail it. Uh, the church's address is Box 580, Eston, Saskatchewan, SOL1AO. You can also... Just drop by the church during business hours. We are always open Monday to Fridays in the morning. Sometimes the afternoons are a little bit hit and miss, but we are always open in the mornings, uh, Monday to Friday. Or you can go to the website, uh, estinfullgospel.ca, and just go to the Donate tab, and you can give that way as well. Lots of ways to give. If you have any prayer requests, please, 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 let us know. If you have any needs, please let us know so that we know how to best serve you as a church. You know, even though we are not together, we're still gathering uh, as best as we can uh, on the different social media platforms. But you know what? I do miss gathering. And we do miss you. So uh, if you're able to join us in any way, uh, please do that. Again, happy Mother's Day. And we pray that God would give you a blessed week.